Start doing this 3020 engine. That crank, they rebuilt that crank. What a what a thing of beauty. Ho 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 ho. That's nice. Still rolls. Huh. Bonus. All right, so yeah, after you torque each cap, give the crank a wiggle. It feels good. Uh, piston rod assemblies, front on the rod, front that little F on the top of the piston so them match up. The, the circlip, snap ring, whatever you wanna call it. <clears throat> Make sure the side you're doing obviously is good, but also I've went to the other side and on a couple pistons, the other side was not in place. So I always go to the other side, roll it in the groove, and uh, there. And then we got our new rod bolts in the bag. So I'll just get these liners together. <coughs> Red O-ring on top, black O-ring on bottom, and then lots of lube on the black O-ring on the bottom here, and on the red O-ring and lots of lube on here. Um, the thing I kind of noticed over the years is if you lube the top a lot, when it goes through the top O-ring, that bottom O-ring doesn't get much. So I, I give that bottom O-ring a lot of pre-lube and then that liner drops right in. All right, I've got two, two piston assemblies pushed in and, uh, and the rod, the caps torqued on them. So like always, whenever you torque a cap on an engine, you give it a feel. Um, and then now's the time that you would peek in around that liner and look for any O-ring material. If, an o if one of the liners kind of came in tough, you know, like, God, I really had to push that thing down or hit it with the, the dead blow a lot. Um, take a look, if any O-ring material came with the liner, you know what? Just pop the liner out, put new packings in there, and do it again. Um, do it right now because you don't want to do it after the engine's completely together and back in the tractor. So we'll get the other two popped in. Some bolts <clears throat> just to hold the liner. Gas piston doesn't bite in hard like a diesel. Still a good habit to have bolts hold your liners in place cam not much to show you there lube up the bushings good you can feel as it's going down each journal floats in the bushings <clears throat> loctite and you're to the point lube and loctite lube and loctite and uh we got a little intermediate gear to run our uh, governor like loctite him he's got an oil passage in him so there's a little gasket, so make sure that's good. <clears throat> Keys in the crank. Um, we are timed there. Number one's at the top. So we'll stand him up. We'll get the balancer box put on here. And we gotta find the timing mark for that. And then we'll get the oil pump on. Well, there's your balancer box. Since we're dealing with a four cylinder, they're not naturally balanced. So you can see all the weight on all four hubs. And so that just helps your other four cylinders, like your 6400 John Deere's, and some of them don't have a balancer box. They'll actually have balancer shafts that are like little cam shafts down there that are timed and do the same thing. Um, but this is simple and effective. I don't know, I, I, in a way I, I like this one <clears throat> over the balancer shafts, but I have no explanation why. Ah, so let's get that guy um, finished washed apparently and then uh, We'll get that guy mounted up and we'll, we'll get him timed. To help me out when setting this down, I just paint because the, their little timing mark is very difficult to see. So I just put a white line there and then 
put a white mark there. And hopefully that helps me when we set that box down on top here. <clears throat> set it down. Hopefully it gives me a little, a little assistance in the old vision department. Zoom back here, we can see our gear is way over here. The crankshaft's kind of straight up and down, not quite, but we're timing way over here. So we'll just take and just bring bring the crankshaft over to it. And that's that's kind of why I like the white marks because it really really exaggerates that timing mark because sometimes them timing marks aren't that easy to see. So we're there. So now we'll shimmy this around because it's floating on the dowel pin. So we'll shimmy it around, get it to drop down, and then torque them bolts on. Oil pump looks fantastic. You look around in the housing for gouges and scoring, and uh, she looks really good there. If you were in question, you can go to the book of your particular machine and see what the tolerances are, but the gears look fantastic. There's no really frosting or wear to them. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. That's a thing of beauty. That's just a little grit. No, oh, that's just a little discoloring on the gear. Yeah, that looks absolutely fantastic. My hands are transferring from the solvent here. My hands are transferring goo onto it, but <clears throat> I'll get that wiped up before we put her back together. There you go. All right, we bring our engine back to top dead number, number one, top dead center. <sighs> Goofball. So we got our groove. This oil pump's missing the indicator here, but uh, we follow that gear, that tooth, we follow it down and line up. There's a little tiny pinhole there, but we're pretty much just lining up down the casting, down the center line of the casting. And then when we get it in the engine, because you can see the harshness of the gear, so as we move in, how quickly that will spin. And then we'll flip the engine right side up and we'll look at that orientation. I thought it was supposed to be 15 degrees roughly at an angle. Uh, this way or this way, I can't remember. But um, So we'll try that and see how that works. All right, we rolled her over. So that's what we want. That's the front of the engine. And we want that front of the engine side pointing towards the block. So instead of parallel, we're 15 degrees in, and that looks pretty darn close. On a diesel engine right now, I would grab the injection pump and uh, set that pump at number one and put it on there and see how close you are, if you have to adjust it or not. Because the diesel, the pump itself sits over your studs and only has a little bit of wiggle room. You got, you know, fitted steel lines. You can't just be spinning the diesel injection pump. But our distributor, it's not a stationary. So there's there's quite a bit of, of twist and leeway. And if you look at the tip, I don't know how well this will show up. Um... But uh, it's offset. I don't know how to get that to focus better for you. Them pins um, on the end of that shaft are very, very slightly off of center of that round shaft. So they're to my side of center, these tabs. So you can only put it in one way. I think that shows a better angle. So there we go. We're, we're pretty much timed. So uh, let's spin that sucker back over and bolt that pump in and bolt it all together. Well, there we go.
go. Bolts in, torqued and Loctited. Same here, same here. Definitely put a new packing for the suction tube. Do a new packing for your oil filter tube. Um, oil pan rear, rear main. We'll do that now. And then uh, maybe we'll flip her over and get the lifters down on top of that camshaft and maybe start doing putting the head on. Ooh. Well, there we go. The head popped on fine. The oil pan. So this is this is a normal thing nowadays. I wasn't able to put the oil pan on because the gasket that came in the kit, I did not like how it lined up with the holes. Um, and so we had to order the, a new pan gasket from John Deere. So that will be a couple days when that comes in. So in the meantime, we got the head on and nothing, nothing special to see there. Just set it on, <clears throat> bolt it down, and uh, now we'll retorque it. It sat overnight torqued, so then you crack one bolt at a time, crack it loose, and then just retorque it, and uh, it'd be interesting. I'll mark one to see if it retorques to a different spot or not. But that's what we've always done. Retorque the head, we'll get the valve train up here and get the valve train set, and then we get the distributor on, the oil fill tube, the cover, or the, the pump, um, oil sending unit, kind of clean up this side a little bit. So I did it, so there's the mark. And there's where it was, cracked it loose. So we gained that much more rotation to maintain crush on the head. I've never really measured it before. It's just, you just do it. So if you're attempting your first John Deere engine and you're getting it back together on the rocker shaft, you got an oil hole. So if you took the shaft completely apart, you know, took your cotter, your, your pin out and, and just Stripped the shaft down and scrubbed it up good. You have an oil hole and an oil hole, and you have a roll pin and a roll pin hole. So make sure you reassemble it in the right orientation because you could put all your arms on backwards if you're not paying attention to that. And then when we put these clamps on, they're just held in by friction from the springs on the rocker arms right now. Um, just orientate the hole close to the, you know, you know, parallel with that bolt because they're both straight up and down. And that just helps going back on a whole lot easier. And so, yeah. So I'm not torqued down. I just turn each one to bring it down equally. And, uh, and then I take the pry bar and just give the rockers a little wiggle to make sure that they're not snagged underneath the hold down. And then, uh, and then we'll torque them down 50, 55 pounds. We'll torque them down and we'll set valve lash. Well, we got number one to top dead center. And on the 30 series and newers, we have a locating pin for better, more accurate crank position timing, crank positioning. But how do we know if we're on number one or we're on number four. Well, it's very simple. John Deere does a very simple pattern. If we're on number one, then we can do one, two, three, skip, hit, skip. If number four was on top, it'd be the same pattern. One, two, three, skip, hit, skip. So these two are down. So we have to be on number one because if we're on number four top dead center, one, two, three, skip, hit, we would be trying to adjust a valve that's down. That doesn't make sense. So by default, we're on number one. So we got one, two, three, five is what we can adjust. If it's a six cylinder, 
we can adjust 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9. 10, 11, 12, we can't touch. On the six cylinder, then you spin at one revolution. Then you can do your 12, 11, 10, 8, 6, 4, 8, 6, 4 um, rocker arms. So it's a, yeah, simple pattern. I don't know if that helps or not. Unlike many other heads out there, John Deere was not a cross flow. So your intake and exhaust are on the same side of the head. So we don't go exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake like many, 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 many other engines do. We've got an exhaust, two intakes, two exhaust, two intakes, and an exhaust. So we got our feeler gauge. It's a double, double feeler gauge set. And uh, I wasn't done quite counting here. Um, now, now, we got, that's one for the blooper reels. <laughs> um, so we got our 28 on one, our 15 on the other. And I just flip end for end. Doop, let's do this. We'll try it. open it up and I just get sliding it and there it kind of locks up gets hard on my gauge so I relax a little bit there's a good feel <clears throat> and we hold that position and I've got it a little bit on the snug side because when I pull this wrench, it usually loosens up to a nice spot. I don't know. So rolling it over on these early engines, <clears throat> I don't know how other guys do it, but I just simply, <clears throat> use a screwdriver and uh, I'm coming up super slow so I'm feeling it move through my fingers and the minute it starts to I feel like it's stalling out then we're looking at our key position down there our keyway and it's still moving there it's, I think it's about done right there and our key is dead center six o'clock and our pry bars on the floor now we can do the other ones so just like I had said now you can do one two three skip hit skip because uh, now this one is loose these two are loose when these two were loose in the last segment <laughs> these two were tight in the last segment and now they're loose see it all comes together 